Soon afterward, the English ship reached the shores of Virginia and sailed inland up a wide river. Governor Ratcliffe, this is the place to anchor, said John Smith, to the expedition's gold-hungry leader. Pocahontas, Miko, and Flit watched from the forest as the strange pale man hauled the ship toward shore. Pocahontas couldn't believe her eyes. Sensing danger, Flit buzzed nervously. Later that day, Poetan called a meeting of the council. The chief asked Kokun to take a band of braves and observe the pale invaders. Governor Ratcliffe quickly claimed the land and its riches for England. As some of the settlers began to clear the forest, Kokum and the braves kept watch. Other settlers dug for gold. The greedy governor was sure the new world would make him rich. Meanwhile, John Smith was sent into the forest to look for Indians. The first one he met was a beautiful young woman. She started to flee, but he urged her to stay. Pocahontas liked the handsome stranger, but she was not sure what he was saying. Then she remembered what Grandmother Willow had said. If she listened with her heart, she would understand. By now the settlers had spotted the Indians in the forest. It's an ambush! screamed Ratcliffe. Arm yourselves! Shots rang out, and an Indian was wounded. Before the day ended, Poten sent for warriors from other villages. John Smith wasn't with the settlers when the fighting broke out. He was with Pocahontas. As they talked, Miko suddenly ran off with John's compass. "'What is that?' asked Pocahontas. "'That's a compass,' said, said Smith. "'It helps you find your way when you are lost. "'I'll get another one in London.' Then John told Pocahontas about London's paved streets and grand buildings. "'There is much we can teach you,' he said. "'We can help improve your life.' Suddenly Pocahontas realized how little John knew about her world. She told him that every rock and tree and creature had a life, a spirit. John began to understand. <laughs> 